Monster Hunter Rise version of Mind's Eye is one of the worst explained and most underrated skills in the game. In previous games, Mind's Eye only worked preventing bounces and hard parts and that was all about it. But in Monster Hunter Rise, it is different. It gives you up to a 30% extra damage when hitting hard targets. But the game fails at explaining what is a hard target. A lot of people misinterpret it by being whenever your weapon should bounce. But that is not true at all. Here there is an example. Using Corn Pop or hitting the leg of Mechanodon, your weapon doesn't bounce at all and you deal 21 damage. Now, I will get into my box and equip Camellia's head that gives you Evade Window 2 and Mines I 1 in the chest for the third level. So now, I have 30% extra damage in hard parts. And indeed, now hitting the leg the damage is raised to 28 damage, no bad at all. These 7 extra points of damage is the difference between a level 4 wide shell and a level 5. Sadly, this is the best scenario possible and there is another thing affecting if Mind's Eye activates other than the hit zone. That is the sharpness. If I now try it with blue sharpness, the effect will not activate at all. Look how the poke does even less damage than the green before. Observe how the poke's numbers are orange. It takes the weapon to drop again to green to have the effect activated again and the numbers turns white. This is what the game defines as a hard target, white numbers. If you are getting those, Mind's Eye can activate. This is bad because if you are getting blue or white sharpness, the hit zone where Mind's Eye becomes active becomes lower and you get less benefit from the skill. The Mechanodon sadly is inadequate to research the thresholds where blue and white get activated, so I need to do an in-field research about both. First target is Teostra. It has a 38% hit zone in the front legs and a 30% in the rear legs. The rear legs with white sharpness give us white numbers but the front legs are still orange. The same happens with blue. Blue will not get activated with the 38% hit zone, we will need a lower one. Camellia's tail is a 35 hit zone. Once again we get yellow numbers with white sharpness. But this time blue sharpness gets white numbers. For getting more precision with blue, hitting bold eyed and hind legs slash abdomen that is a 36% hit zone also activates the effect. There are no 37% hit zones in the game, so I will roll with that. We still have to determine where white activates. We know it is at least at 30%. The next threshold to test is under 35% is 33% by using our Zuro's arms. And we clearly get white numbers there. The final threshold is about when green activates. The next number above 40 in the game is 43. An example hit zone of this is raking the legs when covered in webs. And we can see orange numbers there. With this, we get all the thresholds appraised. White, 33% hit zone or less. Blue, 36% hit zone or less. Green, 40% hit zone or less. These are interesting numbers. Let's multiply the hit zones with the sharpness and the mind's eye bonus. White, 0.33 multiplied by 1.32 and 1.30 gives us a modifier of 0.56. Blue, 0.36 multiplied by 1.20 and 1.30 gives us also a multiplier of 0.56. Green, 0.40 multiplied by 1.05 and 1.30 gives us 0.546 would have been 0.56 with a 41 hit zone that doesn't exist. If you hit a 0.4 hit zone with blue sharpness, you will only get a 0.48 modifier. This is the rare case where the lower your sharpness the better. When hitting these kind of hit zones mind's eye is totally worth it. The prime example of this is Teostra. Teostra head is only a 50% hit zone and the rest of the body except the wings and forelegs are under 35% you may then decide to focus on the hind legs, a very little dangerous zone and do the damage of a 39% hit zone. I have been told that the current gunlance record against Teostra is using mind's eye because of this. And how you benefit from lower sharpness helps you to run less sharpness protection. I can guess that the very best weapon for Mind's Eye is the High Ninja Sword that has a long natural green and is 100% critical anywhere without weakness exploit. But I'm a gunlancer, don't ask me about that. But sure I would slay Gog for a gunlance with 100% natural affinity. I will not actually judge the skill if it is worth it or not in general. 
I know it is pretty good in gunlands because full bursting is wild and makes it hard to target specific hit zones. The Camellia set also comes with a lot of points and is easy to include. A poison weapon with mind's eye and double damage poison is something to behold. I use it with PUK gunlands and can wreck monsters like Apex Arzuros where you will not hit the head for most the fight. So, these are the facts about mind's eye. When it works, when it doesn't works and the best scenarios to use it. Are you going to give it a try? Let me know. See you in the hunt.